Uh, welcome to you all. Uh, in this uh, short video, we'll discuss the papilla and papillary masses. Uh, to examine the papilla, uh, we place the uh, tip of the equiendoscope uh, at the level of the papilla uh, with a slight uh, minimal upward deflection uh, to kiss the papilla. Uh, minimal uh, clockwise rotation will delineate the papilla while inside the lumen while a uh, slow gentle counterclockwise rotation uh, will demonstrate uh, the papillary region and the muscularis propria and more and more counterclockwise we will uh, visualize the common bile duct pancreatic duct and double duct sign so in this video this is the papillary region we are now inside the lumen of the second part of the duodenum this is the papillary region, and this is the muscularis propria layer, and this is the abdominal aorta, and this is the lumen of the second and third parts of the duodenum with air inside. So this is the papilla, this is the muscularis propria, and this is the lumen of the second part with fluid inside. This is the abdominal aorta. Gentle minimal clockwise rotation will visualize the papilla while floating inside the lumen of the second part of the duodenum, while gradual counterclockwise rotation, this is the muscularis propria, will visualize very nicely the muscularis propria, and this is a small papillary mass. More counterclockwise rotation will visualize the common bile duct with a plastic stent inside and the pancreatic duct. Uh, this is a double duct sign and part of the region of the pancreatic head. So counterclockwise rotation, we can see the common bile duct, and here there is a plastic stent inside the pancreatic duct and part of the uh, pancreatic head, and this is the uh, aorta and the IVC. So this is the common bile duct, pancreatic duct, IVC and aorta. This is by counterclockwise rotation, more and more counterclockwise rotation will visualize uh, the distal common bile duct and here this is the venous confluence of the portal vein, splenic vein and the superior mesenteric vein. Okay, this is uh, a video showing uh, mild extension of the papillary mass inside the common bile duct, now inside the second part of the duodenum at the level of the uh, papilla and here and here we can see a small papillary mass and the common bile duct with a stent inside and the pancreatic duct and here we can see very small extension of the papillary mass inside the common bile duct and this is the aorta so this is a small extension of the uh, papillary mass inside the common bile duct. Yes, this is a common bile duct with a stent inside, and this is the pancreatic duct. Yes, this is clockwise, roti clockwise rotation will bring the mass itself. This is a papillary mass. Yes, and here there is a small extension of the papillary mass inside the lumen of the uh, common uh, bile duct. Yes, this is a common bile duct with a stent inside, and this is a, a small extension of the papillary mass inside the common bile duct, and this is a dilated pancreatic duct. This is the double duct sign, and this is the abdominal aorta, and here there is a small extension uh, of the papillary mass, this is the papillary mass, and this is a small extension continuous with the original papillary mass and ha has the same texture as the papillary mass. So this is the area. This is a small soft tissue area of the papilla inside the common bile duct. In order to do uh, endoscopic ampullectomy, uh, the, there should be uh, four prerequisites. First, the papillary mass should not ex exceed three centimeter. 
the intraductal extension should not be larger than one centimeter. Here it is 2.7 millimeter by 3.9 millimeter, so it is less than one centimeter. Should uh, the mesh itself should be less than three centimeter. It should respect the deeper muscularis propria layer, no invasion of the muscularis propria, propria layer, and the biopsy should not be uh, severe dysplasia carcinoma in situ, or of course not to be uh, adenocarcinoma. It should be only mild to moderate dysplasia. So uh, the four points which should be fulfilled in order to do endoscopic and colectomy again, uh, the, the tumor itself is less than three centimeter, intraductal extension smaller than one centimeter, respecting the muscularis propria layer and only mild to moderate dysplasia, no severe dysplasia or carcinoma in situ. This is another example of a well-defined papillary mass. Yes, this is a well-defined papillary mass located in the lumen of the second part of the duodenum with fluid inside. And here, this is very well-defined muscularis propria layer. So it is respecting so it is respecting the muscularis propria layer of the duodenal wall. And here, this is a, a CBD with a very small soft tissue shadow inside. With a very small soft tissue shadow inside. So there is minimal extension of this papillary mass into the lumen of the common bile duct less than three centimeter. And here, the muscularis propria is very well respected. So we can do endoscopic and perlectomy to this mass. This last slide shows T3 papillary mass. This is a papillary mass with a stent inside the lumen of the second part of the duodenum. And here, there is interruption of the muscularis propria layer. This is the muscularis propria layer of the opposite wall. And here at the site of the mass, at the site of this mass, there is interruption of the muscularis propria layer, and even the mass extend, extended into the head of the pancreas. So this is the mass, papillary mass, stent inside the corn bile duct, dilated pancreatic duct, interrupted muscularis propria. Here, the muscularis propria is very nice, but there at the site of the mass, there is very obvious interruption of the muscularis propria layer with extension into the head of the pancreas. So it is a T3 papillary mass. The TNM stage of the papillary mass is T1, restricted to the innermost three layer of the duodenal wall, mucosa, muscularis, mucosa, and submucosa. T2 extending into the muscularis propria. T3 extending to the pancreas for less than two centimeter with preserved major vessels and T4 extension of the pancreas more than two centimeter or involving one of the major vessels. So this mass is not candidate for endoscopic ampullectomy because it is not respecting the muscularis propria layer. It is for surgical resection. And thanks for your attention.